Alrighty guys, what's going on? Linky here, and today we're going to be talking about Pokemon in the Scarlet and Violet DLC. We know that the DLC, the Hidden Treasure of Area Zero, is going to be coming out this year. We know about its two different parts. We've got a couple hints about what the story may entail and what people we're going to meet and what places we're going to travel to. We've also gotten some brand new legendary Pokemon revealed and some regular Pokemon that serve a special role. Outside of those, however, are we going to get new Pokemon in the Scarlet and Violet DLC? Are we going to get brand new Pokemon that we haven't seen yet? New Paldean Pokemon and new Pokemon for this generation. We're going to discuss that in today's video. Now, going on past precedent, DLCs, third versions of games, sequels, whatever form the secondary follow up to the beginning of a generation is for Pokemon, we tend to get brand new areas, brand new characters, and some of those characters are brand new Pokemon. We already have three brand new Pokemon that were officially announced in the Scarlet and Violet trailer that are not yet available, and two Pokemon that have already been available. The two legendaries were Terrapagos and Ogrepan. Those are two Pokemon that we're going to learn about in the DLC, Ogrepan seemingly in the first of the two DLC waves, and Terrapagos, who seems very similar to the crystalline entity that is in Area Zero in the second half that does not yet have a firm release date. We also got three protector Pokemon, three adorable little uh, monkey creatures, Okidori, Monkey Dory, and a bird named Pheasantipity. Pheasantipity, it's a fun name, we'll go with it. And they have very similar designs. They have purple bands going around their bodies in different places, and they are discussed in the trailer as uh, heroes that protect the land of Kitakami in the past, and there is now stone monuments to their likeness in the village. So these Pokemon might not be legendary, but they are worshipped by the people of Kitakami. On top of these five Pokemon, we also got the two brand new Paradox Pokemon that have already been available to be caught. They can't be anymore, but seemingly they will be available in the DLC as well. Those were Walking Wake and Iron Leaves. And let's get that out of the way first. I think we're going to get new Paradox Pokemon. I think that's probably the largest guarantee that we can come to expect in this DLC. In terms of why we're going to get new Paradox Pokemon, it's twofold. One, I think there's a ton of design possibilities that they have not yet hit on, and I think that it's absolute gold. I think Game Freak realized when they were developing the concept that the community would take to it incredibly strongly. We have seen a bevy of fan art, concept art, Bakemon of different Paradox Pokemon and different spins on Paradox Pokemon. To have a brand new set of DLCs for these games and not include more than just the two, I think would be a major misstep. The fact that we got Walking Wake and Iron Leaves also shows us another reason why these Paradox Pokemon have value. They can be included in Terra raid battles. One of the biggest problems with Pokemon Sword and Shield was that their raid battles felt really stale. There wasn't a ton to them and they had to utilize the Gigantamax forms of Pokemon basically to sell them. It just got very boring. But with these Terra Pokemon, you can change their type, you can do different marks on them that can be acquired, you can run them at timed periods, and you can lock ones behind DLC. So you can't get Walking Wake and Iron Leaves if you didn't participate in the Terra Raid battles a couple weeks ago. As of now, you can trade for them, but obviously. I think we're going to see more of them, and I think it's going to be a way for Game Freak to keep Terra Raid battles fresh. It also helps that you have two different versions, and you can flip them and do the version exclusives for Scarlet in Violet's Terra Raid battles, or you can do it straight. So it's totally up to them. I just think it's a really smart marketing ploy for one of their biggest multiplayer features outside of battling and trading, and that, of course, is Raid Battles. Now, before going any further, I just wanted to mention that the vast majority of you guys who are watching these videos and hopefully enjoying them aren't subscribed to the channel. Now, of course, subscribing is free and you can unsubscribe anytime. And if you do subscribe, be sure to turn that notification bell on so you never miss another upload. 
and check out the join tab. See if the perks interest you. And if you want to go the extra mile in supporting me, that is also always greatly appreciated. There's just so many designs too. We've are, the Suicune is just absolutely incredible. Walking Wake is a gorgeous Pokemon. Their naming schematics are just so fun and clever and different from what Pokemon typically goes for when they're naming their designs. It's tremendous. So right off the bat, we're going to get more Paradox Pokemon. That is very obvious. Outside of Paradox Pokemon, there's a lot going on with the story of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet and what's going on in Area Zero that we don't have fleshed out. And even though we've gotten Terrapagos revealed and it does seem to resemble the turtle that is causing all of these problems and the turtle that seemed to lead Heath to write these equations, figure out the time machine, which then encouraged Sada and Turo to complete the work, everything going on in the story seems to be towards Terrapagos. We're not totally sure yet because as of now, we only have the design, but today we got a brand new Pokemon revealed through the Pokemon anime. We don't have a name for it yet. We don't have a typing for it yet, but it seems to be related to Terrapagos in some way. It could be a Cosmog and Cosmoam situation where they are evolutions, they're pre-evolutions to what we already know. It could be a form change a la the Zygarde cores. We're not entirely sure yet. For what it's worth, it could be its own Pokemon distinct from Terrapagos, similar to a Deontay situation where there's a Pokemon that is similar to it. They're related in the lore, but they're not officially connected. There's a variety of ways that they could go with this, but the fact that we're getting this Pokemon introduced in the first episode of the brand new anime tells me that they are still holding quite a lot back. And now we know that the anime is an avenue where they could reveal brand new Pokemon or brand new characters that we don't already know about leading up to the DLC's release. There is a wide berth of new Pokemon we could get. And this is just talking about legendaries and paradox Pokemon. The three uh, uh, Kitakami uh, protectors, those as of now, to what we know, are regular Pokemon. We're probably going to see a bunch more, considering we only have regular Pokemon so far for the first part of the DLC. Now, on Pokemon's website, they do talk about new Pokemon in the first part in their little blurb description. You'll meet new people, new Pokemon. In the second one, they focus more on the Academy setting and the story. So there is room to question if we're going to get brand new designs in both of the DLC releases. I personally think they would be a little silly not to even if it is more related to what we see in the first part of the DLC, I think there needs to be more of a hook besides just the story because Pokemon outside of the stories they tell in the games is also a major marketing monster, basically. All of these Pokemon the, and the anime and the trading cards and the games are all mapped out to continue selling plushes and toys and merch and to have new Pokemon in one piece of the DLC but not have them appear in the other just seems a little bit short-sighted like I was talking about before with the Paradox Pokemon. We're gonna have a lot of time to speculate about the DLC and it's probably going to be a couple more months before we see another trailer for the DLC. We have a decent release date window for the first part of the Hidden Treasure of Area Zero, fall of 2023, but the second part is a little more murky. There have been some people that have speculated that it could very well get pushed into the first quarter of 2024, not the first quarter, the last quarter, which is in 2024. So we will see. We will see how this all shakes out. We're not even sure how deep into development Game Freak is just yet on this DLC. So there's a lot to talk about and there's going to be a lot of Pokemon. If we're going to get new Pokemon, I do also believe some of them would be revealed in upcoming trailers. We did have some Pokemon that Game Freak held back up until the game's release of Scarlet and Violet. They do this with every generation. They get data mined two weeks before. But they do also include brand new Pokemon. And just because it's a DLC, don't think Game Freak is going to take is not going to take this opportunity to spread through the entire year reveals of new Pokemon. We know kind of the areas we're going to be exploring, so seeing maps and other things affiliated with these locations is also going to come, but if they reveal new Pokemon, namely Paradox Pokemon throughout the year, that also gives them more of an opportunity to run Terra raid battles throughout the year leading up to the release of this DLC. That's my theory. That's when I think we're going to see brand new Pokemon. I do think brand new Pokemon are coming outside of what we've already gotten. We've already gotten them in the anime. So let me know what you guys think down below. What kind of Pokemon would you like to see them reveal for the Scarlet and Violet DLC? What do you think? 
of the brand new legendary Pokemon that we got teased in the first episode of the new Pokemon anime, the Ho-Oh of this uh, anime story. Let me know down below. And if you're not subscribed to the channel, don't be sure, don't forget, don't be sure, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn that notification bell on so you never miss any future content. I've been Linky, and we'll see you all in the next video. Peace out.